the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's wave our hands to Jesus tonight with hearts full of expectation. Lift your hands to Him, believing that He will walk wonders in the midst of His people. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away Till there's only you Let every other name fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Sing it one more time Let every other name fade away Shalabakusa let every other name fade away Till there's only you Let every other name fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Hallelujah. Father, tonight we declare that Jesus is revealed in this place and Lord, I pray that your word will come with power let there be every manifestation of the spirit that you will in this place tonight in the name of jesus let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered give our lives direction let mantles fall in this place tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you please be seated thank you again hallelujah Praise the Lord. It's really good to be here again. I think this is last I was here. It was right here. And I think since the, oh, no, no, no. Aside from when I preached for Apostle Achidume, I'm not sure I've been here again. So I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for the love, the reception. And let me honor all the servants of God here present. May the Lord honor you. In the name of Jesus, Apostle Achidume, God bless you and honor again, sir. Amen and amen. We took our time to pray at the session earlier in the afternoon. And um, the Lord challenged us as to the fact that one of the assignments of the gate of hell, especially in this season, is to silence our voice according to ezekiel 19 9 it says that they bound him so that his voice would not be heard on the mountain of israel and we took our time to pray and tonight i just want us to look very briefly to the book of acts let's study for a few minutes before we pray now i began to challenge us in the morning again about the necessity for doctrine conferences like this among other things seek to restore us to an accurate understanding of doctrine doctrine um, is how believers are mentored doctrine is the cause content for the believers growth and maturity there is no other provision no other possibility for a believer to grow and attain stature outside of doctrine 
hallelujah praise the name of the lord it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of truth that is intended to turn a people into something very specific and so when we random guess our spiritual experiences were not able to grow methodically to have that level of spiritual understanding that will allow us to be effective in ministry this is a believers convention and that means that in addition to the salvation please listen carefully in addition to the salvation of souls this also provides a platform to mature believers and believers become matured when they are enlightened when they are transformed by the accurate communication of doctrine so they now become people of stature and power not based on longevity around christian activities but based on the accurate communication of doctrine hallelujah it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified hallelujah it's very very important that we understand that god intends for us to grow for as long as we remain children our experiences will not differ from they that are outside of the kingdom for the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he said he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all hallelujah so how do we grow we grow by understanding the truths of god's word not randomly communicated growth must be methodical line upon line precept upon precept beginning with what the bible calls the foundational doctrines of the christian faith hebrews chapter 6 the foundations he lists six of them there are six of them that represent the pillar of the believers foundation that on the strength of those pillar you sustain the stamina to explore the realm of the spirit without the fear of being misled because every one of those pillars sustains the ability to keep you and guide you attempting to delve into dimensions of the prophetic the apostolic visionary experiences without these doctrinal foundations will inevitably delve any individual into error because of the vast nature of the realm of the spirit you will need to have that foundation this is why those who operate in the gifts of the spirit and in the ministry offices most powerfully are those who had the background of sound doctrine you would notice that some of the most accurate communicators of the truth of scripture regardless the diversity of gifts at work in them if you trace their lives you will find out that most of them respectfully speaking started from conservative and orthodox assemblies i don't say that to show any sarcasm to what we know as the pentecostal charismatic move but most of them in as much as they were not really exposed to the ministry of the holy spirit but one thing they went through was a methodical system where the foundational truth of the faith was inculcated is that true and so even in the face of error their deviation is not too far because the foundation is solid enough to keep them so it's easy for them to be restored but people who just begin their journey and cherry pick any spiritual truth they wish will find out that they are making the mistake of the man who built upon sand because the same thing that happened to the one on the rock happened to the one on sand it was not the structure it was the foundation hallelujah so my, my passion really when when god provides a platform like this my passion more than the impartation and the miracles and we experience that is to be able to introduce a dimension of the kingdom that is able to further our stability are we together now so that we become grounded we become immovable established in the knowledge of the truth so that our experience will be the answer to the prayer that paul prayed over the church in Colossae, chapter 1 and verse 9 he bowed his knees praying to the father of our lord jesus christ that they be filled with the knowledge of his will number one 
number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three they be filled with spiritual understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness he says and the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes let me digress for one minute and just summarize for you in my opinion and based on the authority of scripture and the experience of the fathers what i believe is the recommended roadmap as far as the growth and the maturity of the believer is concerned we're dealing with the book of acts but i just thought that it was important to set that foundation because we're a generation that likes power we like the realm of the spirit and that is wonderful but there has to be this foundational understanding praise the lord let me have just one gentleman anyone that's all right this this one is okay please come now watch this believers this is a believers meeting now if this gentleman gets born again today receives jesus christ and they hand over this gentleman to you respectfully speaking whether as a preacher or a worker in church or one who has been in the faith for at least five years let's do an interview for you what are you going to teach this man if i hand this man over to you and i leave a belkuta and i say i am returning by this time next year i expect to find someone who has made progress in the spirit dear teacher let me know what you are going to teach him what is the first step when i hand him over to you what is he going to learn what do i expect to see by next year if this is not taught the body of christ we will keep piling a lot of children and for as long as there are people who are saved but do not grow they become praise also because if their minds are not transformed satan still has dominion over them are we together now yes now this gentleman came to jesus because he received a proposition that jesus can save jesus can lift there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved is that true he believed it and he came to jesus now he's been handed over to the church for growth and for maturity you will be surprised ladies and gentlemen that after five years of meeting this gentleman when you interact with him as a matured believer you will live with a lot of disappointment maybe the only thing that will be added to his life is he may be a pastor in a church now even with that immaturity maybe the only thing that will be added to him he may be a praise and worship leader now pending on whatever gift he has and you will be surprised that just because he's excelling as far as church appointments are concerned he is matured until you speak with him as touching doctrine what do you understand about prayer what do you understand about dominion what do you understand about the supremacy of the world what do you understand about being a spiritual man what do you understand about repentance from dead works what do you understand about the kingdom what do you understand about the holy spirit what do you understand about demons what do you understand about the keys of victory given to the saints what do you understand about the wealth in the kingdom what do you understand about purpose and destiny what do you understand about god about jesus what do you understand about satan what do you understand about the life to come so when you say i am a matured christian by what parameter a i have stayed very long in church b i went through maybe a foundational class and i am now a worker or a deacon c i started my own ministry d i discovered that the gifts of the spirit had work in my life now i prophesy now i lay hands on the sick you will be shocked to understand that none of those things in themselves sustain the ability to administer spiritual maturity is someone learning tonight 
before we explore the book of Acts, it's important to just let you know what should you do with this man how can this man transit to become that giant that you saw at the time of his salvation you see our fathers used a formula that we have thrown away most of them will tell you when the missionaries came and they were saved if individuals were saved even if they did not see themselves for five years they knew that five years later they will meet matured and solid and strong christians they were not necessarily educated but my goodness they were spiritual can our growth in this kingdom be predictable can i random pick from any membership regardless the church and be sure that there is a threshold level of spiritual understanding will sustain run an interview to sincere believers who love jesus christ and you will live with tears not because they are bad and some of them are very zealous like i stated in the morning this is exactly what the devil is looking for when hunger collides with ignorance satan can cash in upon that hunger and begin to expose people to extra biblical experiences and because they do not even have a reference they don't know when they are in error are you seeing that now so many people begin to swallow all kinds of things that look spiritual in context but then the formation that those truths are bringing is not christ they are becoming something else because if it is doctrine in partnership with the holy spirit you should become like christ are we together if you want to make say omelette in the kitchen right when you scramble your eggs there is something exact it should look like so you know when to stop that frying because you have a picture of what it should look like and you can by that reference know when you did not get it right so the average believer when confronted with challenges does not even understand the principles of the kingdom accurately to know what keys of the kingdom to engage with understanding you may have heard me say it the average believer will will random pick any truth in the bible and engage it the blood of jesus the fire of the holy ghost seed sowing touching and agreeing the prophetic now that person is trying to find a solution but because there is no accurate understanding of the keys of the kingdom and what doors they open we will just random pick and engage anything and the danger is that one will walk but you do not know which one really worked was it the blood of jesus or was it the seed you sowed or was it the prayer was it the night vigil was it the prophetic decree you don't know and most times we don't care so there cannot be mastery the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully every time you kick your car you do the exact same thing you did when you learned how to drive and that car under normal circumstances should not be disobedient because there is a law that is connected with that principle if a demon spirit attacks your family do you know what to do if for any reason you experience delay in your life do you know what to do are we together if the odds are against you do you know what key to engage if you are succeeding in the kingdom do you know how to remain there as a man of god if god trusts you with a congregation do you know how to grow that seed to become a, a ministry and a vision that is impacting people around the world do you know how to train your spirit man so that you can build and grow and expand on the gifts of the spirit within you i'm exposing these various areas to you so that you will see that even the best of us still has work to do it is based on this revelation that hunger is genuinely created so that no matter what our achievements are we run back to scripture we run back to jesus we run back to doctrine there is no arrival mentality in this kingdom because there is so much even in heaven there is room to come up hither you can still see further hallelujah this became a burden and i said the church in nigeria and the church in africa will remain in trouble 
if we do not obtain grace from God to come up with doctrinal strategies for the growth and the maturity of believers if we do not pay attention to this I guarantee you that in the next 10 to 20 years with the way technology is interrupting the purity of doctrine with the way there are all kinds of mixes coming based on our understanding of westernization a day will come there will be too many versions of Christianity you can stand with 10 professing Christians and not be able to pick which one is authentic already there are shades of these things around the world and you know I'm sent to the body of Christ I don't speak from a standpoint of sarcasm but there has to be authenticity ladies and gentlemen hallelujah and then the more complicated one is now when we delve into the book of acts and we have to now deal with the subject of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit he's called the promise of the father the father gave a promise jesus advocated that promise and he prepared the people for that experience that's where we got the theme for this conference are we together now and so in looking at it we must realize that if we are not grounded in doctrine the devil can easily manipulate us and the reason is because the holy spirit is invisible to the optical eyes if the holy spirit were a physical spirit it would be very difficult for us to be in error when jesus walked upon the earth there were many pseudo jesuses but they knew the real jesus but now the holy spirit operates within the realm of the spirit the bible says because you do not know him they do not know him and cannot see him remember john 14 it says but you know him because he is with you and shall be in you so how do you relate with a deity that is invisible how do you confirm if he is the one how do you confirm that a demon spirit has not come to replace his ministry in your life the authority of scripture the accuracy of doctrine becomes our safety guard you can know you are standing in truth when you are consistent with doctrine in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning the bible declares it says through him were all things made and without him that means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made are we together now so i want you to challenge yourself in fact while you are sitting we are going to pray in one minute and ask the lord to expand your desire for genuine spiritual growth to expand your desire to be a seeker of truth that you will open up your heart and intend that i'm not just going to rigmarole around my christian experience i intend to grow my growth to be methodical my growth to be intentional i will buy the truth i will subject myself to learning hallelujah praise the name of the lord god bless you thank you now in acts chapter one in acts chapter one the bible lets us know that the entire discourse of acts chapter one was a capture of the discipleship program that happened when jesus resurrected now look how powerful look at the method that jesus used in raising apostles for three and a half years he spent the time immersing them in the truth of the kingdom beginning from his discourse that we know to be the beatitudes he began to teach them the structure and the way that the kingdom operates contrasting the way that the roman government approached life and then the way that the kingdom approached life and he began to expose them he allowed them to ask him questions and he now began to answer those questions and then when we get to john 14 john 15 john 16 he began to introduce them to this personality are we together now yes 
he said let not your heart be troubled he starts john 14 he says ye believe in god believe also in me that in my father's house there are many mansions he said if it were not so i would have told you he says i go to prepare a place for you and when i go to prepare that place for you i will come down and take you so that where i am there you may be also they didn't understand what he was saying then he now introduced them to this personality but the comforter who is he now he begins to talk to them about another comforter who will come and become an extension of his ministry to them and he told them up front that the world will not appreciate the ministry of that individual that comforter why because they do not see him neither do they know him but he says you know him for he is with you here and he shall be in you he began to teach them when we get to chapter 16 he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he shall guide you into all truth that he shall take of what is of the father and he shall reveal to you he began to introduce them to the ministry of the holy spirit then his passion then his crucifixion then his burial then his resurrection you would think that when jesus resurrected he would spend time enjoying his victory he had no time for that quite honestly as soon as that coronation happened in heaven he returned back quickly and he called them acts chapter one to continue the lecture the bible says he taught them the things that pertain to the kingdom for 40 days he sat them down and was concluding the part of his mentorship 10 days after that they would be having an experience acts chapter one now they began to discuss with him and he was talking to them about the restoration of israel and they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel he said it is not for you to know the times that the father has put within his care now verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power when it comes upon you he says it will make you witnesses unto me in jerusalem judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth when he admonished them like this he stood right before them and began to levitate into the heavens then the bible says for 10 days they were camping in that place that we know to be the upper room now let's read scripture acts chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it sat upon each one of them verse 4 says they were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance the bible says when you read verse 6 it was noised abroad and multitudes came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language they began to speak in different languages and then 12 says they were all amazed and were in doubt saying to one another what meaneth this 13 others mocking said these men are full of new wine but peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of judea and all that dwell in jerusalem be this known unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken as ye suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day and then he says but this is that this is that which was spoken of by prophet joel tonight this scripture will be fulfilled in someone's life in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god listen to me if we are to be effective the bible mandates that we follow them not just follow him there are two levels of followership number one is to follow christ who is the author and the finisher of our faith the bible says looking unto jesus is that true who is the author and the finisher of our faith 
who was the who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame so ultimately we follow jesus christ but as far as our growth and advancement is concerned the bible says follow them there are always them in every generation them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise and the first them we see that are worthy of our followership are those who are directly mentored by the christ himself the foundational pillars that even heaven recognized their ministry that the new jerusalem was built with 12 foundations with the names of the apostles written there follow them means take note of the pattern that was used for their building and their development and subscribe yourself to that pattern so how did jesus start with them number one he found them a similitude of the new birth and he told them come follow me notice that when you start your journey with jesus christ his first assignment is not to reveal your assignment his first assignment is to reveal himself it is come follow me not follow it if for any reason you find yourself following any other thing including purpose before jesus you are in error the assignment is come follow me not follow destiny not follow a preacher not follow the gift not follow an office come follow me he said and i will make you that is the next level transformation the making so you start by following and then the law of abiding john chapter 15 1 to 8 you must learn to abide followership requires abiding you don't just visit and go to abide means to stay until you are immersed in that body of knowledge that makes for your transformation are we together now jesus spent a major part of his life literally every day mentoring a group of people he broke them into different categories there were things that when he wanted to teach it was only peter james and john that knew there were experiences only those three people had there were experiences only the 12 had there were experiences only the 72 had there were experiences that the crowds had but albeit he was involved in the ministry of building them by exposing them to the truth of god's word and then when that process of transformation was sufficient then came this experience in acts chapter 2. now this was not the first time the heavens were opening and there were all kinds of sounds from heaven we read all through scripture that there had been many instances where the heavens opened and there were sounds coming from heaven are we together now yeah. according to scripture the first biblical record of that opening and sound coming from heaven as far as the fallen man was concerned was the interaction between cain and and god when he killed abel god spoke from heaven and cain had him he said cain what is this that has happened am i my brother's keeper where is abel he said and then his judgment started then when you read what happened to hagar and the young lad when hagar was dismissed from the house of abraham the bible says she dropped ishmael so that he would die without her seeing him die and then god spoke from heaven and he made an oasis there and rescued ishmael sent her back to the house of abraham and you continue to see the heavens open and several communications happening then the bible gets to jesus and it says that at age 30 he went to john the prophet who was baptizing and when he was dipped in water the bible records that the heavens opened twice the bible records this one at his baptism the second at his transfiguration is that true then there was a voice the bible says the holy spirit came in the similitude of a dove and rested upon him and a voice thundered from that heaven and said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased do you know what that means in other words 
this man has set a model that has brought satisfaction for me if you ever want to be to bring joy to me this is the reference this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased he said i have accredited him by reason of his compliance to spiritual patterns so hear ye him hear ye him does not just mean listen it means emulate follow his formula and you will bring joy to my heart jesus was driven to the wilderness what is the formula that jesus followed i will tell you he was born a type of the new birth the next thing that happened was he immersed himself to transformation from age 12 he was at the temple god was watching learning under the scribes and the pharisees for 18 years we do not know what really happened to him by age 30 we see that he's full of the word and ready for empowerment listen to me if you want to please the father in your christian experience do not compromise on this formula the new birth experience transformation empowerment that is how to contend for a pattern that will bring glory to the father through your efficiency but many believers here's how we approach it the moment we get born again the next thing we want i'm not talking about empowerment like the holy spirit helping you i mean now to be endued with power for service most people are empty they are not transformed they are not that repentance has not happened and so we contend for transformation we contend for impartation and at the end of it it becomes disaster because the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of god you carry does not look like a lie if you do not have any encounter with the word the anointing does not have any ministry in your life the ministry of the anointing starts to the degree to which the word dwells in you are we together now so now jesus followed that pattern birth transformation empowerment service you see now he's training the disciples with that same pattern he called them a similitude of the new birth submitted them to three years three and a half years thereabout of structural mentorship now they have qualified to receive the promise of the father and the bible says jesus told them tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power listen carefully now the day of pentecost came and the holy spirit the heavens opened attesting to the fact that they had complied with that pattern i have thought that the glory of god always comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed every time you see the manifestation of god's glory god's glory is a signature it is telling men that someone has walked in keeping with his patterns if you see the glory of god in a man's finances it means he has walked in keeping with the principles the patterns if you see the glory of god in a man's life as far as signs and wonders are concerned it means that he has walked in keeping with the patterns you first know the ways before you see the glory moses said show me your ways before he said show me your glory you don't have to pray for his glory the glory is an effect when you follow the patterns you will see the glory of god if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you tonight you will have a very fruitful christian experience your life will be so efficient it will bring joy and glory to the father are we blessed so the holy spirit came upon them and transformed them now who is this holy spirit that jesus talked about so much who is this holy spirit that came upon jesus in the similitude of a dove who is this holy spirit that even the word seemed to be so helpless until he arrived who is this holy spirit that jesus had to warn the disciples to say tarry don't just use zeal to go into the field wait until he arrives and the bible lets us know that he will not come empty that every time he comes he's coming along with a package 
the name of that package is power say power shout it one more time power is the currency of the realm of the spirit that means if you meet me as a nigerian and you ask me for something what i will give you most likely is money is that true if you ask me for a bottle of water i may not sell water but i can bring out a thousand naira and give you is that true we call it in economics the purchasing power i have given you the capacity to have that water if you fly to the u.s and you meet someone and he wants to bless you he will not bless you with naira he will bless you with the currency within that territory so when you ask god to give you efficiency he sends you the holy spirit and the holy spirit brings to you the currency of heaven my goodness my god when he lands with that currency of heaven you can hold that currency of heaven like you see a nigerian can still hold dollars is that true and look at the excellency the the the, the whole idea of currencies that one one hundred dollar bill is not the same thing as 100 naira is that true so if i have 200 dollars and you have 200 naira we all have money but the challenge that comes before us will show who is holding hard currency and who is holding whatever it is so don't just say you have power uh -uh. listen carefully there is the power that comes from heaven when the holy spirit comes the bible says he will not come empty you shall receive power you shall receive power man of god you shall receive power businessman you shall receive power the same way if you are broke physically on earth like we know you are not evil but you will be incapacitated there are things you cannot do listen to me when you submit a cv to get a job is it really the job you love most times it's not the job the job is simply a channel is that true you respect the job and you respect the owner of that job because without the job and the owner there is no possibility of a salary is that true so for for a salary to come you need a relationship with that man and the job you cannot bypass the holy ghost and stretch to obtain power uh -uh. the protocol was so designed that when you come you meet him first please listen believers because we're about to pray now you shall receive power that sound from heaven was not just a sound of wind uh -uh. it was the holy ghost coming he said you shall receive power power to do what i ask you money to do what if you want to buy a house what do you use if you want to pay medical bills what do you use if you want to pay school fees what do you use is that true if you want to travel and pay your air ticket what do you use if there's all kinds of family quarrel over money and you want to settle it what do you use so if i give you money what did i really give you i gave you more than an airfare i gave you peace in it i gave you capacity for advancement are we together now now watch this if you have money and you only use it for medical bills you are shortchanging the potentials of that money because the same money that you use to pay bills is the same money that can buy you a house is the same money that can send your children to good schools so when he says you shall receive power he didn't mean you shall receive something that will be used only when you are a preacher uh -uh. i am giving you an advantage that lifts you beyond the realm of the ordinary man please believe what i'm telling you you will be ineffective if you reject the revelation of this sound from heaven most believers have run away from the power of the holy spirit 
and you ask them why they will say i'm not a preacher i don't need it i am not a prophet i don't need it i am not an apostle i don't need it but you give anybody money at the gate he will not say i'm not a worker he will not say i'm a female he will not say i'm a male the moment you bring out money they will collect it because they know that it can serve every purpose listen when you stand in a restaurant or you stand in a mall to shop the goods you are picking will not ask you how old you are the goods you are picking will not ask you what is your gender the goods you are picking will not ask you your background there is only one requirement do you have the purchasing power if that television is 500,000 or 1.5 million if you can drop the money there you will pick it and the television will not refuse to go it will follow you that means there is a gift that God can give you beyond your background beyond your gender beyond the limitations of your family first the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Spirit power I believe this I studied the fathers of faith from history and even the ones who are alive today none of them none of them rejected this gift he said you shall receive that means you can reject it many of us have rejected it but tonight God is giving you an opportunity again to receive power power to heal power to deliver power to transform power to turn things around power to rise beyond the grip and the limitations of 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 the vicissitudes of life power against the forces of darkness that sit upon the destinies of people listen to me there are people like i said in the morning great voices that should be heard across the globe but there are forces sitting on people's destiny and many of us are wishing that one day something would happen and jesus knew he said tarry now you have tarried again and he's coming to you saying i brought this in 2009 you rejected it now you see what it has cost your ministry i brought it in 2015 you rejected it look what it has cost your family if that power were not there or if that power were there you probably would not be at this level now he has come to you again in this conference and some of you i will not be surprised if you are here and you will reject him reject the holy ghost reject his power and he will back up in peace and allow you recycle pain again in ministry recycle pain again in destiny watch the devil destroy your family again watch your life go through circles of pain giving all kinds of explanations whereas there is power available for you how many of you have been stranded financially especially when you wanted to buy something and then you got to a season in your life where you came into more than enough and you went back to the same thing you know that that dominion joy of being able to purchase what frustrated you yesterday that's what god wants to do for you today that by the time you return from this conference the powers that refuse to give way you go back from this conference and you say in the name of jesus christ i didn't come empty peter had been passing the gate beautiful i am sure the blind man he may not know them but they knew him they knew his condition and i'm sure peter will say well, i wish i had the power i wish i had the power i wish i had the power and jesus said tarry something is about to come upon you the next time he was going to pray when he saw that man he said no yesterday's limitation cannot be tomorrow's limitation silver and gold i may not have but such as i have i received something when the holy ghost came such as i have such as i have hear what peter was saying i know what i don't have but i know what i have i know what i don't have the privilege of a superior background but i know what i have the power to fit all that background 
I know what I don't have. The privilege to be raised by responsible fathers and mothers, you may say. But now I know what I have. Power. Listen to me. Please listen. When God was calling me into ministry, I prayed and I said, Lord, I have watched people do ministry without the power of the Holy Spirit. I have watched people give explanations and got frustrated. I have watched people destroy ministries like being dropped in the den of lions. And I said, Lord, I do not want the kind of ministry where I will watch the sick and give them explanations and have them go back like that. I don't want the kind of ministry where I will pray and speak over people. They will shout amen with all their hearts and return with no testimonies. How will I can't live with my conscience judging me every day that this the problem is not their believing. They had faith enough to come for your meeting. When a patient meets a doctor, he has done his own part. The remaining now is the doctor. Hear me, Abel Kuta. There are many of you who have done well as far as submitting yourself to doctrine and truth. But can I tell you, the way you want to go about your life and destiny without power, I guarantee you, you will be frustrated. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. There are demonic forces that will not allow you rise to become an expression of what Jesus wants. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy ways. It is through the greatness of thy power. The, the greatness of thy power. Not your explanation. Not your stories. The greatness of your power. Man of God. The gates of ministry will not open just because you are sincere. You need power. There are gates that will not let you rise. There are gates that will not let sinners come to be saved. listen he said i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us just help us under the anointing listen to me brothers and sisters hear me please look up i have been oppressed by demon spirits this man talking to you, I'm not just telling you what I read in a book. I know the kind of background I came from. Nothing rises to a global scale. No. I started ministry as a man of God and I was still being oppressed by demon spirits. Most people would not be honest to admit this and tell you. I was not an evil person. Yet these spirits will come and oppress me. I will shout in the name of Jesus like I was taught. And they didn't go. And because of the prophetic, I will see them. It's not like they are just pressing me. I'm seeing these spirits. And I'm saying the Bible says, I give you power. Where is it now? Listen. Someone has to get angry in this place this night. And say enough is enough. I'm not going to let things continue to be powerless Christianity, resultless Christianity. I keep giving all kinds of trust, explanation. No, sir. Hear me. Hear me. Your Bible is full of the story of men who knew how to receive power and knew how to operate it. There was a man who lived like a God called Elisha. One time Naaman, the Bible says the captain of the Syrian army, a valiant man in war, but he was leprous. And a little slave girl who served his wife, she said, oh, there is a man that I can recommend for you. If you have the humility of meeting that man, listen to me they now wrote a letter to the king and the king said you see this trouble these people are just looking for an occasion for war when elisha had it he said where is the man send him and let him know there is a prophet in israel ah. i was told one time there was a time that they brought someone with a twisted face 
to Archbishop Idahosa of blessed memory. Do you know what he did? He told the man, look up. And the man looked up. He said, God, this man was created in your image. If this is how you look, leave him like that. We need to repent as a generation. This bragging, we brag about power, we've not seen anything. Those we call miracle workers in our generation were ushers in the Bible. In fact, they were in the welfare department. You see the requirement to be a worker in welfare in the Bible. You, you needed to have revelation equal to a man of God to serve tables. Listen to me. I know that power has been abused. I know that there are people who have merchandised it. But can I tell you, Abel Kuta, please hear me. If it is the move of God you want to see, if it is revival you want to see, if it's bringing this territory under the influence of the Christ, let me tell you this. Our explanations and stories, the world will soon become tired of us. They are already becoming tired of us. That's why our children now are not interested in the things of God. They prefer technology. They will be in church and they are browsing. You call Jesus, it's as if you call Satan for them. We need power. We need power. We need power. Shanada balakata, skade kete bereke teko tosh, skade brente kabaros kadi galakata ba. A Christianity with results, a Christianity with genuine proofs that in one day you can bring glory to Jesus. In one day you can bring glory to Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.